Hello you 35,000 amazing souls. Thank you for subscribing to my channel. Does China have democracy? How does it work? What is the difference between Chinese democracy and American democracy? I have somebody here today to explain it all to us. He's a very, very smart individual in this particular topic. He's well known for riding his bike throughout China. He's even been through Xinjiang with his bike, Jerry Gray. Hey Jerry, uh, welcome to the uh, video and thank you for your time, my buddy. Thank you, Jerry. So yeah, we have a really big, big misunderstanding around the world if it gets to China, China's democracy. And uh, I felt I need someone that can explain it to us a little bit better than what I can do it. So that's why I got you on, Jerry. So can you please start off by telling us what does democracy look like inside China? Uh, yeah, I can. Um, very, very much different to the democracy that uh, we would expect to see when we read Chinese or when we read Western newspapers, and um, very much real in China. I don't think there's ever been a time in the last 70 years where China hasn't had some form of democracy, but what it is now is is very, very real. And uh, so real, in fact, that just less than 10 days ago, my uh, wife had the opportunity to vote in her local elections. Her sister and her parents voted in their local elections. These are different. My wife's registration is in a different city. So the pair of them voted in their own local elections. And um, if, you, if, if you don't see that as a form of democracy, I don't know what is. Now, the whole idea there is that they vote for someone at the very lowest level. The difference right. between there and, say, democracy in the West is that mm -hmm. those people at the local level are only going to get to keep their jobs, keep their positions or gain their positions, not based on promises, but based on what they've achieved. So it's really very much an achievement based project. Anyone who has been uh, involved in Chinese politics or involved in China for a long time can actually see this. They know this. It does exist. It's, um, it's very, very real. Some people say that you actually need to be a party member. You don't. You need to be a member of one of the parties, and there are nine of them. Now, all oh, of wow. them work together for the betterment of China, and uh, the Communist Party is by a very, very long way the largest of them. But there are other parties here in China as well. And you need to be a member of a party in order to stand for election. You also need to be a trained administrator. So you can't just have someone like, um, like my wife, for example, can't just stand for parliament, as it were. She would have to become a trained administrator. So she has the ability to manage the job that she's in. And that's a big difference between uh, one of the big differences between us and them, as it were. Right. Uh, Chinese don't have politicians. Mm -hmm. America has politicians. Now, right. in America, most politicians, uh, a huge majority of politicians in America are lawyers. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you do get some people from different different industries. You get you get normal people, if you like to call them that, non-loyal, non-lawyer, non non-legal people entering yeah. into, into politics. But in China, you only have bureaucrats. You don't mm -hmm. have politicians. Right, right. I get it. Mm -hmm. So to sum this all up, that is how Chinese democracy basically look like. And also, it's safe to say there is seriously a proper democracy system running with inside this country. Um, yeah, it's just different. It, it's, not, it's, it's, it's not what the West thinks of as democracy with two parties. But mm -hmm. you know, given what you've got, uh, there was a danger for a little while there that a guy called Kenya West was going to be the president, next president of the United States. <laughs> yeah. he, he actually, even even when he wasn't running, this yeah. guy garnished 60,000 votes. Right. 60,000 people voted for a rapper. Is Absolutely. that democracy? Yeah, 70 million people voted for someone who will be over 80 when they finished. Yeah. And the other 70 million voted for someone who's even older when they finished, 82, 83 years old when they finished their four-year term. Is that I, democracy really? And, and that, that, you know is, how that much is a very, very, very good point you make there. And, and that is basically what, what, what I want to connect here is if I put the two democracies right next to each other, right? Um, I just asked you how the Chinese democracy looks like. Um, in, a, in a short 
description, can you tell me how American poli- uh, the American democracy looks like to you? Okay, now, I, one caveat here I have to explain. I've never lived in the United States, never wanted to. I've never even been there. All I can talk about with any degree of uh, confidence is what I read in the papers. Right. Unfortunately, I don't believe most of what I read in the papers because what I read in the papers about Chinese is uh, about China is pretty much 100% either misinformed, misinterpreted, or outright lies. So what do I know about America? Um, I would say that if we were going to put these into two columns to define what democracy is, the column where the Americans were, are, would be called politics. The okay. column where China is would be called governance. Now, the word democracy doesn't really come into how this is run. Currently, America has a crisis in health. It has nearly a million COVID deaths. Apart from that that particular crisis, if you get sick in America, there's a fairly good chance that you'll be bankrupt for life. So (laughs) that's a health crisis. It has a gun crisis. It has a crime crisis. And I'm watching on on the news at the moment um, these gangs in California going through shops and... and and drug epidemics all over the place. Well, I was coming to the drugs and the homelessness. So it's got homelessness, drugs, guns, crime, and a health crisis on top of a pandemic. All of these things at the same time. Now, what they're doing is they're throwing money at this. Let's let's sign off on $2 trillion. But mm. let's really look at that. $1.2 trillion that they said, let's sign off on this, mm. was actually six hundred and fifty. sorry, $550 billion dollars that was already allocated. So it's not a $1.2 trillion bill. The Mm -hmm. $550 was already what they were going to spend. This is a maintenance. This is all this is. This is not an infrastructure bill. They are going to spend, I think, $150 billion to bring Amtrak back up to standard. They're going to spend another $150 billion on bridges that are not going to be renewed. They're just going to be replaced. Be right. replaced because they're they're falling down. They're literally falling down. They have had no maintenance for 50 years. Now, what kind of governance does that? This is a statistic. The entire country of 1.4 billion people has less murders than most states of America. Oh, wow. Less yeah. murders in this country than most states. <laughs> I can't remember when I last heard of anyone being robbed, raped, burgled, it's not in the last five or six years. My no, my local same. newspaper is the most boring newspaper in the world because there's nothing <laughs> nothing sensational to write about. It, it really it's it's not good here. It's totally safe. So is that democracy? The people that is are not happy? De- that is not democracy, Jerry. And thank you for summing it up so beautiful. Um, you know, I think where the problem lies, and correct me if I'm wrong, right? You are a little bit more educated into this than what I am, um, but. I think people connect freedom to democracy, right? They they make this mistake in believing that if you have a democracy, you are really free, okay? And that is the misunderstanding if it gets to Chinese democracy. They believe people are not free. How can there be democracy? There's no democracy in China. It's a perception rather than a reality. And Revenge. the perception of freedom in the West is very high. The perception of freedom in China in the West about China is very low. They, mm. they believe that China has no freedom. If you ask a Chinese person, how do you feel oppressed? Do you feel any persecution? And the answer is no. And believe it or not, I've actually asked people that in Xinjiang. Oh, oh yeah, we're yeah, safe, yeah, yeah. We're safer than we used to be. That's oh. their answer in Xinjiang, where, <laughs> where all these allegations are being made. Now, right. I've traveled through Xinjiang. Uh, and anybody who follows me knows this. I post pictures and uh, uh, you know, I've, cycle, I've cycled a bike across Xinjiang. And mm. consequently, I happen to know a little bit more about that region than most people who are reading papers in the West. Absolutely. Uh, and yeah, throughout China, not just Xinjiang, but throughout China, people in, in the West believe that Chinese people are oppressed. Throughout mm. China, people believe that they're not. Now, here's the difference. It's cultural. The Chinese government does, absolutely does encroach a little bit more on the lives of its citizens than a Western government does. But culturally, they're allowed to. Culturally, they're expected to. 
And culturally, what happens is that the Westerners look at this and say, that's not an acceptable situation. Whereas the Chinese people look at it and say, this is what I want my government to do. Now, when the government gets involved in the schools, when the government gets involved in the data management, when the government gets involved in the hospital system and the healthcare system, and it asks you to take vaccines, in the West, people say, it's my right to say no. In the Chinese community, people say, well, this is what my government does because my government cares for me. So it's really a perception that is, it's a misunderstood. It's a very, very big misunderstanding about China. It's more Absolutely. cultural than disciplinary. And the same thing is happening with the culture of freedom. Chinese people have as much freedom as they want as long as they obey the hierarchy. And for 5,000 years or three and a half thousand years, two and a half thousand years since Confucius walked the earth, which is five or 600 years before Jesus did, Right. They have had this system <laughs> of hierarchical respect. So why would an American system, which is 250 years old and still being tested and, and failing miserably as it did on January the 6th, as it did in November last year, uh, you know, th this system is failing miserably and people are living in poverty in the world's richest country. And in China, people are lifting out of poverty in what is still not, a rich country. All right, Jerry. So this brings me to another question. Why is there such a craving from the West to bring Western democracy inside China? Why? They don't care about Chinese democracy. What they want to do is they want to bring Western capitalism. And they've tried okay. to do that. They've tried to impose their capitalistic ideas onto China. They're trying to do it through uh, Hong Kong. They're trying to do it in Taiwan. They're trying to do it through Tibet and through Xinjiang. The National Endowment for Democracy it's got nothing to do with democracy. It's about hegemony. It's about financial and economic control. It's about control of the oil and the gas that are in those regions. It's about control of the microchips, the uh, silicon chips. All of the things that China has that the West craves, mm -hmm. none of them are democracy. They don't want to bring democracy all they okay. want to do is bring control. Is China an alternative to Western democracy? No, I don't think so. Uh, I said it before. China is a communal culture. Um, Westerners are individual. There are, depending on who you read, whose books you read, there are different dimensions of culture. There are five, six or seven dimensions of culture. In some respects, uh, Western um, culture and Chinese culture are similar, but in others, we're very different. And for example, um, individualism is one. The Western uh, culture is very much an individual culture. Chinese culture is very much communal. That that would communi communism would never work in America, in the UK, in Australia. It can't work. They're, they're just not communal enough in terms of their culture. That's one problem. Uh, Chinese people not just their government, people are long-term focused. It's called long-term orientation. The most important one is something called power distance index. The power distance index on a bar chart, America is up there, China is down there. And what that means is Chinese people respect hierarchy. American people have a much more equal basis. An American guy can tell his boss to go stuff himself. Australians have an even higher power distance index they, they're really much more relaxed about it. And the, the Chinese people are much more hierarchical focused. Well, there you go. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you understand Chinese democracy a little bit better. Listen, me and Jerry had an in-depth podcast for over an hour long, which I'm going to upload right to you on my Patreon account. You don't want to miss that. And you can also support this channel. Make us louder. If you are tired from all this politics and nonsense going on, check out my sneaky little side channel here. And my friends, protect your soul and stay free from all the lies the media tells you. Thank you.